Welcome back to the Astrophysics Channel. In this tutorial, we take a closer look at the tracking challenges astro imagers face to produce the highest resolution deep sky images and how astrophysics mounts, technologies, and software work together to address this. Specifically, we're going to look at the relationship between guiding, sky modeling, and absolute encoders. Each of these are designed to address different problems and therefore have corresponding strengths and weaknesses. Understanding the types of problems you may face and how these three approaches work and interact with each other will help you produce the best possible results. And that's our goal in this video tutorial. Although we discuss technologies and software specific to astrophysics mounts, much of the content here applies to anyone looking to understand and improve their tracking. Also, this tutorial keeps things simple so anybody can achieve a good understanding of the issues and the solutions. There are, of course, many nuances and exceptions to these points that we chose not to include for clarity and brevity. Before we dive into the details, let's talk a little bit about why this is an important discussion in the first place. Modern amateur astroimaging has gone through nothing short of a revolution in recent years. Comparing images produced by the best scientific teams and cutting edge equipment from 50 to 100 years ago, they are far surpassed in clarity and depth by today's amateur imagers, even with modest budgets. Advances in sensor technology, precision tracking, optics, and affordability have all contributed to these astonishing improvements. Precision tracking specifically is one of the pillars for these advancements. Simply put, if the target doesn't stay precisely still, it won't matter how good your camera or optics are. Precision tracking allows us to take sharper images for longer periods of time and return to targets with repeatability for days, weeks, months, and even years. But we humans, we are creatures of progress. We are always looking for ways to improve and make it better. We want our images to be closer, sharper, deeper, and reveal more of the mysteries of the universe to our eyes. As we progress, it gets increasingly difficult to eke out performance improvements. In order to take it to the next level, we're talking about improvements at the microscopic level, often fractional widths of a human hair. To make these types of advances with such precision, we can't simply use the same things as before and just do more of it. Measurable improvements come with new innovations in technology and software that build upon what we already have. Astrophysics mounts already deliver best-in-class performance, but astrophysics also understands the relentless pursuit of this perfection. Astrophysics introduction and ongoing refinement of absolute encoders and sky modeling continue to push the bar ever higher, and we will discuss the best use of these in the context of tracking improvements. Let's start by looking at some of the challenges we face in our quest for precision tracking. These problems are fairly universal and not specific to any mount, conditions, or technology. Until we can all afford space telescopes, the Earth's atmosphere creates issues for us. Seeing conditions are highly variable and contribute to apparent star motion, distortion, and generally just make things less sharp. Atmospheric refraction, the bending of light as it travels through our atmosphere constantly changes our target's visual appearance, position, and apparent motion. On top of this, variables in temperature, elevation, and atmospheric pressure further compound these issues. Telescopes, image train assembly, and their setup also create issues. Telescope tube materials and other components can and do flex with changes to sky position and temperature. Temperature and sky position changes can also cause shifting of equipment position and centers of gravity. And polar alignment inaccuracies and shifting can degrade tracking accuracy and will always be present to some degree despite our heroic alignment efforts and the convenient and fantastic modern computer-based assistance. Finally, mounts bring their own challenges to the table. Minute imperfections in gears create tiny repeatable errors known as periodic error. Other small imperfections in gearing, such as tooth imperfections, dirt in the gears, and poorly adjusted gear trains may contribute additional error. Backlash in the deck axis can also add challenges when guiding. 
That's not to say all mounts are created equal. Premium mounts such as astrophysics are designed, machined, and assembled with the tightest tolerances available to minimize these effects. Now, let's look at what technologies and approaches are available to address these potential image killers. The most traditional approach is using auto-guiding to handle it all. As the guide star moves, auto-guiding software evaluates its position and, if needed, attempts to correct it using guide pulses and the resulting small mount movements. Periodic Error Correction, or PEC, has been around for a while and is a great technology to address the specific issues of periodic error and gearing imperfections. Using tools like PEMPRO, which is the standard PEC software for astrophysics mounts, these minute imperfections are captured during a training session, a correction curve is created and loaded into your mount, and these errors are then automatically removed during subsequent mount operation with improved tracking. PEMPRO is sophisticated enough to measure and apply these corrections at exactly the right time without delay, so there's no driving by the rear view mirror effect. PEC does a great job at correcting for periodic error, but the other tracking challenges remain. Auto guiding in this example remains an important complement to PEC. By removing periodic error, PEC also has the added benefit of improving auto guiding. It's a win win. Sky modeling is a powerful and relatively recent software addition that can counteract the adverse effects of atmospheric refraction, temperature, pressure, and elevation changes on tracking. To use sky modeling, a modeling run is completed in advance using the APPM tool, which is part of APCC. The telescope slews to different parts of the sky where it measures and compares the expected sky position with the actual sky position. A typical run can consist of a few dozen or a few hundred measurements across the sky. The results are then stored within APCC software, which then uses this information to refine tracking rates as the telescope moves through the sky or as conditions change. Again, this is a solution that proactively addresses these specific challenges rather than reacts to them. Another example of near real-time improvement. Since its introduction, sky modeling and APCC has become increasingly sophisticated with new improved algorithms such as deck arc tracking to make tracking even more precise. Improved integration with third-party software such as Nina enable mobile imagers to build sky models on the fly for specific targets in just a few minutes and can therefore take advantage of sky modeling without a lot of upfront investment in time. As you can tell, Sky modeling excels at addressing specific atmospheric and condition related challenges, but doesn't focus on the other areas such as periodic error. You can therefore see combining sky modeling with PEC can enhance tracking across a broad range of problems. And as we can also see, auto guiding still plays a role for the remaining issues. Our picture evolves even more with the addition of absolute encoders. Absolute encoders is an extremely powerful technology for precision tracking. These hardware encoders are affixed directly on each axis to measure expected position versus actual position, and the resulting encoder corrections effectively eliminate the minute mount gearing errors. Unlike PEC, encoders also address gear backlash in addition to periodic error and mechanical imperfections. Encoder monitoring and the corrections here are so close to the source and so fast that they are effectively real time. It's about the closest thing to achieving a theoretically perfect mechanical mount. Not only do these two technologies work well together, but absolute encoders also improve the accuracy of sky modeling. So in this case, the total performance is greater than the sum of the parts. Combined with sky modeling, now our approach has improved considerably. Now let's back up and look at a couple of obvious questions regarding what's the best tool or tools for the job. First is a guiding only approach. If guiding covers it all, why not stop here and just auto guide? It's a great question since guiding is familiar to many and can produce good results. However, auto guiding is a pretty coarse tool and may not be the best option in all situation. Auto guiding also comes with its own trade-offs and drawbacks. It's reactive. It corrects once the problem is measured, so the corrections will always be after the fact. It's like seeing a stop sign in your rearview mirror and then applying the brakes. Auto guiding can't distinguish between things that should be corrected, like drift, versus things that can't be corrected, such as seeing. So it can't precisely attenuate the amount of correction. 
Guiding can also introduce its own errors, such as pulse guiding overshoots, undercorrections, and extreme cases, oscillations. Poor sky conditions can further degrade guiding performance. There are also some things that can't be addressed with auto guiding, such as higher frequency errors. Auto guiding software may not be flexible enough to account for changing conditions. For example, a single backlash compensation value may become less accurate with changes to the mount's sky position. And a lot of new things can and will go wrong when adding an additional camera, optics, and software for auto guiding. The additional equipment, such as a separate guide scope, off-access guider, guide camera, mean more potential points of failure. There is the added time and overhead for setup, calibration, dithering, settling, rotator requirements, and a lot more settings to fine tune. Auto guiding software has limitations as well. Oversampled stars can create centroid calculation issues. Backlash compensation may not be sufficient or even available and you may not always get good reliable guide stars where and when you need them. So the message here is not that auto guiding is bad, it's just that as a course all purpose tool, it comes with trade-offs. In some circumstances, it may be all that's needed, but in many situations and conditions, there are other tools that can do a better job addressing specific types of concerns and can do it with fewer added drawbacks. The second question, and on the opposite end of the spectrum, is sky modeling and absolute encoders. A combination of sky modeling and absolute encoders paints a picture that only these two technologies are needed for exceptional tracking. If we have absolute encoders and sky modeling that do it all, do we even need guiding? Again, a great question because on the face of it, the answer would appear to be no. And in many cases, precision unguided imaging is now possible and practical. Many astrophysics customers today are doing unguided imaging and producing exceptional results and often point out the ease of setup and use. It's just so simple and the results can be so good. So in this scenario, is there a role for auto guiding to play? The answer can be yes. The reason is there will always be some amount of randomness and variability that just can't be predicted or modeled. These are things like ground settling, materials flexing and expanding that include wood, graphite, and aluminum, mirror flop, equipment shifting and variability, there's just too many things here to list. Adding a gentle catch-all type of auto guiding, also known as bump guiding, help ensures that small things don't add up and degrade your tracking. However, it may also be that your specific setup may not benefit from this additional auto guiding. These are things like wide field telescopes, shorter exposure times, and more permanent installations. So what's the recommendation on which ones you should use and which should you ignore? Every setup can benefit from using multiple approaches to improve tracking, but you will need to decide what combination or approach is the right balance for you between results, complexity, cost, and time. Very generally speaking, Setups that tend to benefit from using more advanced solutions have longer focal lengths, finer image scales, or more exacting imaging requirements. As with many things in this field, experimentation and evaluation of your results is going to be the key to finding the mix that's optimal for you. And remember, we are just talking about tracking improvements here. Astrophysics solutions come with many additional benefits beyond tracking that are worth looking at, such as improvements to pointing, greater ease of use, and simplified operation. We hope this tutorial has given you a good understanding for finding the best tool or set of tools to get you the best tracking possible.